Hello. Well, as promised, um, we're going to be assembling uh, revision 1.5 components today and maybe even installing them on a frame. I um, want to apologize in advance for potato quality of sound. I still have no idea where our microphone is. So let's get started. Um, to assemble X carriage, you will need the X carriage hot end mount, which swings back and forth, um, and the two X carriage pieces that are in the rear. Uh, do make sure that you install the the nuts in the pockets for the um, belt clips. And same over here. And you probably want to install these nuts as well for the actual carriage bolts. All right. So let's start with this piece right here. Uh, first thing you're going to do is take your regular LMU bearing and just push it in. You'll kind of click it to place and you kind of want to make sure it's um, in the middle. Um, next thing you want to do is um, put a little bit of grease in um, the spring pockets. Um, it will keep the grease, uh, the springs lubricated, um, kind of keep everything moving a little better. You can also put some grease in here in basic, which is basically the pivot for the, um, the Honda actuator. So, as you can see, these springs have already been in here, so they are covered in grease. Slide the spring in here, slide another in here. Now, we need our Z end stop. Z end stop. Basically, it's the same switch I'm using for all the other end stops with the little lever removed. Um, I already attached um, wire to it and a connector, um, microfit connector to go into the car to <clears throat> into the harness. So, take the little Phillips screw, uh, screws and attach this end stop to the back of the X carriage front piece hot end mount thing. You don't want to crack the switch, but you don't want it to be too loose. Very satisfying. All right, that's done. Let's set that aside for now. Let's take these two pieces and uh, take our other small LMUU bearing and just press it in here. Take one of the carriage bolts and put it in the back. That is the mount for the fan and the carriage um, harness. Then you take the other bolt. Um, there are three now actually. Um, and this just basically keeps the middle section, which, which is now what the middle section of the X carriage is. Um, this piece also acts as the strike point for the switch to strike against. So it's a little better repeatability versus just um, switching against like, you know, a printed piece. Before we move on, we need to actually put together the cooling duct and the cooling fan mount. Um, these can't really be printed as one piece, so they're dovetail joints. Um, if you're really worried about these coming apart, either throw some glue on there. Um, if you're printing ABS, you can just use some acetone to um, weld them together, or um, just use a soldering iron. Um, but these are this will not have any weight on it except its own weight and it's really light so um, i would not be worried too much about it uh, please do print these in some plastic that can actually take the heat because this part is uh, is beefy but it will be pretty close to the hot end and you may be melting it but you don't want that so now that we have all the parts we need the sandwich comes together thusly um, you have your X carriage um, harness mount and your pulling cooling fan mount um, and they basically go in like 
this. And then you put it into, onto this carriage bolt. Um, I do recommend cleaning all this out so it's a little bit easier to slide in. There it is. So this moves and this doesn't. Win. So the last thing we need to do is put the other piece on there. You don't really want to tighten these. Now we take our other portion of the X carriage and the remaining carriage bolt. Um, and then we take two nylon washers. Um, if you have a belted extruder, you are familiar with these. Um, these are the same, that I'm um, same ones I'm using to uh, for the inner portion of the guidler, um, kind of slippery, plasticky, they're very nice. Um, provide really good um, way to make the join between the two two parts of the axe carriage um, flat and slippery, but also able to put some torque on those bolts, so you can keep it from doing this basically while it's printing. First thing you need to do is see these, these springs right here and then they have a strike plate uh, spring retainer essentially. That's what it tensions against in the other port part of the carriage. Um, you're going to come in at this angle here, um, have the springs depressed by these things, and then you twist it. And then these little nubs will catch on the other side of it. You'll feel a little snap and they bas it basically snaps together. So, come in like so, catch the springs on both sides, compress them in, pivot, and you're go. The carriage has little pockets to retain these washers so they don't slide all the way in when you push them in. But they're not exact because they're printing. but they do help. Kind of push the washer in there and sort of line it up using the, the hex key. And that's in. And do the same with the other one. Having a ball end, um, Hex wrench really helps here because the ball helps locate the washer a little better. All right, so that's all in. Let's gently slide that out and put the bolt in. It might wiggle out on you, but eventually you'll find it and um, everything is gonna be all right. All right, halfway through. And we're in. Do tighten this because this was the hardest thing to get together, so. Next thing is the middle section. Sort of squeeze it all together. And you'll notice grease gets pretty much everywhere. And now the back section. So you're still able to move this around a little bit, and that's good. And then you have the, the harness connector that's not going anywhere. Um, that's pretty much it. 
Um, the little bit of tuning you want to do before you go any further is we want maximum pressure um, on um, tension on this screw to keep the the hot end to basic from wiggling itself off um, or wiggling at all actually uh, causing artifacts on the prints but you don't want it to be so tight that it's not repeatable anymore so I'll show you this right now it's kind of loose you can see that you can feel the clicking action so if we tighten it a whole bunch if you click it it doesn't come back up because we put too much tension on here and no amount of lube is going to save you from that so tighten in it um, eventually you'll find a, where it feels like it's solid and clicking and very repeatable versus um, either not coming back back at all or kind of sloppy tighten these a little more here we go and uh, before you put the cooling fan on you can just feed this cable up here because that's where it needs to be anyway eventually uh, let's re put our X axis end stop on. Uh, this is the same X um, end stop as before. So it's a basic transfer from previous design. One difference is um, the, hot, the, the end stop was moved from basically almost being in the center to off to the side a little bit because I didn't want it interfering with the hot end because the hot end needs to be free to move that's actually a little bit tight okay all right the last thing is the part cooling fan um, same blower type 40 millimeter cooler fan. Um, these holes are essentially meant to be threaded into. Um, so you kind of want to um, thread them before you actually put the fan on. So put the thing in, um, put some pressure on it and make some threads that you can actually work into. So fan goes like so. Take your 16 millimeter screws and attach the fan. You don't want to tighten all of them all together. All at once. Because you want to make sure all of them are finding their hole. All right. Now we can actually tighten all of it. And um, as many of you have discovered, these things are super fragile. So over tightening them will crack it. Um, thankfully, it's no longer a structural component. So if you do crack it, um, it <clears throat> doesn't prevent the fan from working properly and here you go let's put a hot end on it and then we'll actually be ready to install this so I got my fully assembled chimera with the the new style um, blocks that have nice little cartridge style thermistors in them um, conveniently enough those come with Molex microfit connectors already on them they're a little short, but that's okay. Um, so let's install this onto our new carriage. By the way, you don't have to use these if you have um, kit assembled already. They'll work. So instead of the uh, 16 millimeter screws that the previous carriage used, um, we can actually just use 12 millimeter screws to achieve the same goal. Might want to swing the fan out the way.
and this is just installing Chimera. Nothing fancy. Do you really need all three screws to attach a Chimera? Maybe, maybe not. But honestly, if I'm writing a 20 hour job, I, um, I don't want to be experimenting with that. So one of the few f new features of the X carriage, the new X carriage is attachment points for zip ties. Um, see this loop right here. It's very convenient for actually attaching these wires and also the green thermistor wires that come from the harness. Um, you can basically attach them and keep these wires from just wiggling everywhere. And of course you have a plethora of attachment points here for the actual X carriage and other connectors as well.